السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه سبحانه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك اللهم لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد وعلى أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وذريته وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد فيا عبار الله اتقوا الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم 
ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise be to Allah our creator sustainer and cherisher We bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship save Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and lost messenger We ask Allah to bestow his blessings peace and mercy upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his household his companions and all of his followers till the end of time My dear respected brothers and sisters fear Allah be aware of Allah Allah has advised you in the Quran by saying O believers fear Allah and say what's right so he may guide you to what's best rectify your deeds accept you and indeed whoever obeys Allah and his messenger will will have the greatest success My dear respected brothers and sisters in a previous khutbah we discussed how the only hope for a believer who's been given the tawfiq by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the only hope to be with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with the early predecessors our salaf salih the companions of the prophet alayhi salatu was salam is to be mentally and cordially by heart associated with them spiritually that is by bonding with them by the bond of love for any person who loves a person or a group of people allah would honor him by being with them in the day of judgment and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would gather us in the same group with his beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with abi bakr and umar and all of the companions and the righteous people of this ummah but also the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam has encouraged us not just to rely on our wishes and desires for any thought has to be confirmed and proved by our deeds the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam said al ajiz man atba'a nafsahu hawaha wa tamanna ala allah al amani wal kayis man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al maut he said a solid and sound believer is the one who would always hold himself or herself accountable and prepare for what comes after death by doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered him to do and a person the ajiz a person who is disabled this is exactly what the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam has described that person as is the one who always follows his own desires and yet always wishes and desires by magic thinking to be amongst the elite believers so that person is disabled by their desires by their wishes by not doing what's right wishy-washy ma- magic thinking that does not get you anywhere the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam made that contrast by a sound and solid believer who always holds himself accountable accountable not a single day would pass by without knowing what gets you closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering the ultimate destination and the ultimate goal that everyone is going to reach without any doubt والكيس وعمل لما بعد الموت and he prepares for what comes after death and as we 
all know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has warned us in the hadith that the moment you die, all your deeds will cease to exist or to occur. إِذَا مَاتَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ No more deeds, no more opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Munafiqeen has said, مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah has warned everyone that there shall be a moment when you die and when the angel of death is given the permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take your soul away and terminate your life. There will be a moment to wake up for every person. And Allah is talking about the believer. I would say, just Give me additional time so I might contribute. Become amongst the righteous people by doing something else, something more. That is the wake-up call. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall not prolong the term or delay the moment of your death if it comes as he subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded it in the lawh al-mahfuz for he has allowed you awalam nu'ammirkum ma yatadhakkaru fihi man tadhakkar Allah in different ayah says have not we given you enough time for you to remember and do enough and this is what the Prophet has said, أَعْذَرَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ رَجُلٍ أَخَّرَ أَجَلَهُ حَتَّى بَلَغَ سِتِّينَ سَنَةٍ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةٍ Allah has given enough chance and opportunity for a person whose death has been delayed till he becomes 60. Or 40. For that matter, the people of the Medina, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the early Salaf, they used to work hard as everyone else and prepare for their retirement. And once that time comes, they retire, but they don't retire for their vacations, their fun and leisure. They retire to dedicate, to dedicate the rest of their lives to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To stay in the masjid, recite the Quran, do the dhikr, teach other people and conduct the da'wah. And then they would pass on their businesses to their children. And what was that age of retirement, my brothers and sisters? It was 40. For them, when they reached the age of 40, they said, it's over. It's time to dedicate yourself and devote the remainder of this life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our current times, the retirement age keeps delayed and delayed. 55 to 60 and 65 and 70 and people now work even in their 80s busy with just making a living and earning their bread when the people of Medina when they were 40 they felt it's over for this is the age that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning Allah specified that age now on you better watch it because that is the peak of your maturity, the peak of your energy, and the peak of your giving. And it should be dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, a wise person 
is the one who would know exactly how to worship Allah and worship Him smart. And to do things that would have an ongoing and everlasting reward. For if you lived a hundred years, how many prayers you can do? How much in charity can you give? And how much of these deeds, deeds are going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place? For, the, for that, the Prophet والسلام, has taught us, as it is important to focus on that bond of love, to be bonded with the Prophet والسلام, to be with them, it is also important to focus on certain activities, certain deeds that would give you a reward that is, dispro that is disproportionate to what you do. You might do something little, but Allah will expand that ajr. And this is why he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the very famous hadith that every one of you know, إِذَا مَاتَ الْعَبْدُ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ وَعِلْمٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُ لَهُ If a person dies, then all his deeds would stop, would cease to exist except the three things. That is an ongoing charity that he had contributed to and participated in, knowledge that he has spread, beneficial, useful knowledge that he has propagated, and then a child, a righteous child, who would make istighfar and dua for him. These things will count and continue to go to your record even when you die. While you're alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give you that reward. And while you're dead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you that reward. If you want to invest, the Prophet alayhi salatu is telling you, you need to invest in these things because that's the profit you need to maximize. That's what you need to count on. When you pray, that is good. You'll see that light. You'll see that sakina and tranquility in your grave in the day of judgment. But you're not going to get the reward of praying more and more. It doesn't matter. It's over. Same thing for fasting. But the Prophet والسلام, is telling you that is the portfolio you have to count on that even when your life stops to exist, the reward is constant continuous till you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam has elaborated further in a different hadith what is that sadaqa jariya. And he clearly identified certain things that you need to invest on. Every single one has to be a stock you own. That is something you have to own because it is going to be the maximum. It's going to be the winning stock for you. And the Prophet والسلام, again explained that in detail and inshallah we're going to spend enough time explaining every and each one of them so we all can take part in that by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As narrated by Ibn Majah after Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said Sab'un yabqa ajruhunna lil mu'mini ba'da mawtihi There are seven things that their reward would be ongoing even after the person dies. And the first one of them as similar to the previous hadith قَالَ عِلْمٌ عَلَّمَهُ أَوْ نَشَرَهُ Knowledge that he taught or helped spreading. And that is something, my brothers and sisters, we belittle. I'm going to give you one example. 
and see how this reward could be enormous, could be countless. Everyone now, when they talk about the hadith, we talk about narrated by Imam Bukhari, Muslim, Ibn Majah, and even we go up to the companions, Abu Huraira, Abu Bakr, Umar, Abdullah, Ibn Umar. Do you know how many people throughout history narrated this hadith? Do you know how many millions or billions of each hadith has been recited over and over? Each time this hadith is recited, Imam Bukhari is getting that reward. Every time that hadith is recited, Abu Huraira is getting that reward. And every time that hadith is recited, the Prophet والسلام, is getting the fadl by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing like that. And this is a tip for you, my brothers and sisters. Do not set aside. Be part of teaching people in your masjid, in your household. Teach your wife a hadith. Teach your children a hadith. There is nothing better than a bonding activity by Allah. Nothing better for spreading the love and enhancing the bond of your family between your wife, between the parents, between the spouses, between the parents and their children and vice versa, than bonding with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the verses of Allah, with the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Teach your children one simple hadith. Min husni islam al mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni. A sign of the excellence of the Islam of a person that he or she abandons things that don't concern them. That's a hadith of seven words. You can teach it to your wife, to your children, to the people in the masjid, and it goes on and on. Al Muslimu man salim al Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. The Muslim is the one that all other people are safe from his hand and his tongue. How simple. Few words. Teach them that. You die. And now, as you know, people share the hadith. It goes in social media. And before you know it, millions of people are transmitting the hadith. You die and everyone who memorizes the hadith you get their reward. Teach people al-Fatiha. Make sure that you teach your kids al-Fatiha. Why is that? Because they're going to pray and for the rest of their lives they're going to read the Fatiha and you'll get the reward. And they're going to teach it to their children and you're going to get the reward. And it goes on and on and on generations one after another. People send their kids to memorize Quran in the masjid, that's a great effort, mashallah. But make sure certain things you teach them. Because you don't want to be missing that reward yourself. Teach them Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, because that's the third of the Quran in its reward. And a lot of people, as I mentioned before, we made it the job of the Imam or the Shaykh to teach and do everything for the Muslims. Be part of it. You don't need to have a PhD from Azhar in Sharia to teach people Al-Fatiha. Everyone can teach Al-Fatiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a special reward for people especially teaching children the Quran. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu used to say, and when a companion says something, that means they heard it from the Prophet والسلام, or they're paraphrasing. It is not their own opinion. So he used to say, radiallahu anhu, that Allah looks at the people of earth and he's about to send them great tribulation, disasters, and torture. 
but he sees حلق القرآن للأطفال في المساجد. But he sees and looks at the circles of its children learning the Quran in the masajid, and then he holds off subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can be part of this. Imam Ahmad, one of the greatest figures and the most prominent people who influenced the history of Islam, radiyallahu anhu wa arda, was seen after his death in a dream, one of the righteous people. And that person asked him, what did Allah do to you? He said, Allah has forgiven me and promised me the Jannah. And he said, by what? What was the winning stock? قال بتعليم سورة الفاتحة لأطفال المسلمين. said by teaching the Fatiha for the children. it wasn't the seven hundred fifty thousand hadith that he collected. Imam Ahmad, my brothers and sisters, his collection of hadith was seven hundred fifty thousand. one of the most encyclopedic figures. In the history of human beings, Allah, of course, would reward him for that, but that was to show us how important to do anything as simple as teaching Al Fatiha for people. You try to hold an activity in the masjid, a halaqa for Quran in the masjid, and it goes on and on for several months without being held. Why? Because we're still waiting for a hafiz or for an imam or a scientist. That's a lot of reward you're missing out on, my brothers and sisters. Be the one to do it. Especially for the Quran. If someone asks you they want to learn the Quran, do it. The Prophet ﷺ has taught you خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. In its recitation, in its interpretation, in its implementation, in its projections in life, application on life, showing its beauty, showing its glory, showing its illumination in people's life and civilization. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who learn the knowledge, teach it, and spread it, and act upon it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفرين استغفر الله الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد بعدل كل معلوم لك يا أرحم الراحمين my dear respected brothers and sisters, to summarize and connect this khutbah to the previous khutbah, number one, the most important capital you have to count on, your love to the Prophet ﷺ. Every day, ask yourself, where am I? How is my love to the Prophet ﷺ? Every day, remind yourself of our beloved pioneers of Islam. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Aisha, and Khadija, and Khalid, and all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And keep him in your dua. They're not in need of your dua, but it's an honor for you. The second thing after that love, is remind yourself of what am I doing to keep an ongoing reward. Leaving a legacy, a legacy 
with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would keep your reward going even after you die. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد كما صليت وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم إنا نسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب المساكين وإذا أردت بعبادك فتنة فنجنا منها غير مفتونين اللهم لا تدع لنا ولا لأحد من عبادك المسلمين ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرشته اللهم فرج عن المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم اجعل حياة زيارة لنا من كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر وأجرنا اللهم من خزي الدنيا ومن عذاب الآخرة واغفر اللهم لنا ولوالدينا ولأهلينا ولمن له حق علينا ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وصل يا رب وسلم على حبيبك وحبيبنا سيدنا محمد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة